Welcome to Chapter 2, Reading in Academic Context, Part 2. In this video, we're going to talk about annotating a reading. This is a wonderful way for you to engage with a reading. Um, and I'm going to show you some samples after I teach you a little bit about it, and then we'll talk about um, what you're going to need to do in the way of annotating. So when we talk about annotation or annotating a reading, we are talking about that process or that act of adding commentary or notes. There are several techniques that you can use for annotating. One is highlighting. Now I know a lot of people um, are afraid of highlighters because somewhere along the way someone told them only highlight what's important. And when all the information's new, it's kind of hard to decide what's important. Don't be afraid of the highlighter. If you highlight the whole thing, then if that's what works for you, great, whatever. But highlight those things that you might think are important, okay? Underlining or double underlining or using squiggly lines. Those are other ways that you can annotate. You Sometimes you might want to circle something as you're reading or put a box around it. That's another technique for annotating. Marginal notes, putting those notes out to the side of um, what is already written in that text. Um, taking those marginal notes, that's another great technique for annotating. And then, of course, using any symbols, like maybe there's something you don't understand and you've read it several times and you still don't understand it. Put that question mark. That way you could maybe ask your instructor about it. Um, you can use asterisks by um, information you think is important or a particular line in there that you think is really important. I use a combination of all these when I'm reading something. Um, you're going to have to find what works for you. All right. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, marginal notes. Many of us have already acknowledged that we have focus problems. Many of us have had that experience where we finish reading a, a whole article and we don't remember what we just read. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to read the whole thing over again. I don't want to read that whole chapter again because I don't remember what I was reading. So what I do is I check in with myself every paragraph or so. I'll, I'll get to the end of the paragraph. I'll stop. I'll say, what was this paragraph about? If I don't remember, if I don't know, well, I've only read one paragraph. I haven't read the whole thing. So I can go back. I can reread that paragraph. When I can answer the question, what is this paragraph about? Whatever that answer is, I'm writing that in the margin. That way, two days from now, when I go to look back at this before my class, I will remember reading this and I will see my little notes. Every paragraph, there's a little note about what it was about. And so marginal notes are great. They help you review. They help you understand. They help you remember. But I don't just do only marginal notes. I'm also underlining, circling, putting question marks, highlighting, doing all those things. So really work and engage with this. Here's another thing we know about annotation. If you are writing and if you are um underlining and taking notes and doing all this, you are actively engaged in that reading and you will be more likely to remember, especially those of you that are tactile kinesthetic. Remember, you've got to move in order to learn. You've got to touch things in order to learn. Guess what you're doing when you're annotating? You are touching it. You are moving. You are learning. All right, so we're going to take a look at some sample annotations. This is one from uh, a short story called Salvation, and this is actually from my textbook. You see squiggle lines, underlines, marginal notes, okay? Um, anything, questions, anything that pops in my head when I'm reading this, that's what I'm doing. Most of the stories that you will read, there will be not only the title, the author, there will be some information about the author and about his writing, okay? Um, so some of my pieces are filled even more. Others are, you know, look like this. Here's a piece that this was an essay that was written by someone else. Um, and so again, you see my annotations. I've circled, I've highlighted, I've put brackets around things, I've asked questions, marginal notes. 
Here I've identified a rhetorical question that was used. Here this is a topic sentence. This was a topic sentence. Um, topic sentence. Here was the thesis. So all of these. Um, here's another one from a textbook. Notice I'm even actively involved with this intro information. Don't skip over this intro information because if you are remembering that writers write about what they know and experience, guess what? There's going to be information about them in that introductory information. And that might help you understand the reading because, again, they're writing about what they know and experience. Here's another page. Same thing. Lots of marginal notes. At the if you're reading a chapter in our book at the end of the in or you're reading a reading from our book at the end, they're gonna have some questions, some things for you to think about. Those are very important. The key to reading academically is to engage with the reading. While you're reading it, you should be engaging with that reading. You should be annotating. Then you should be responding in writing to what you have read. If you'll take a few minutes after you've read something and just go to a piece of paper, go to your laptop, go to, you know, your notebook, whatever, and for a couple minutes, just write everything that comes to mind about what you've just read. You'll be surprised at the depth and the, uh, the importance of some of the things that you write down that you didn't even know that you understood. Now, you are going to be practicing your annotation. You have a story in your book called Only Daughter by Sandra Cisneros. I also have posted a copy of it in um, your Blackboard course. And in fact, if you'll look at your syllabus schedule, it will tell you where to find it. So you're going to read that story. As you read it, you are going to be annotating using several techniques. Okay, I want to see several techniques used. Then you are going to either take pictures with your phone of these pages and upload all those pages to the assignment submission location, or there is also on your phone, um, if you have an iPhone, you have a um, notes app. And in the notes app, if you go to the camera, it will allow you to scan documents from the notes app okay so you create a new note you hit that camera and then you scan those documents some of you have a printer that has a scanner that will work as well scan all the pages um, and then you are going to upload this into blackboard and let me see if i can pull up our blackboard class all right so In the Unit 1 narrative, Only Daughter, you see Only Daughter annotations. Okay, so let me scoot this over so you can see it. It's due Friday. You can, you are going to attach files, so you're going to browse your computer wherever it, or your cloud storage, wherever it is you have saved those scanned pages. So if you take it with your camera, you're going to need to send it to email it to yourself. Okay, you're going to need to open it on your email. You're going to need to save it so that then you can upload it here. But you will, you will attach those files, okay, those various pages. Now, if you have a printer scanner, you're probably going to print, you're probably going to scan them all into one dot, one page, one document. Okay. Um, if not, you'll be allowed to get several attachments here. Um, then you're going to click submit. Okay. So that concludes this video. Now you should know a little bit more about um, how to annotate and to engage yourself with that whatever text you're reading, and now you know about your homework um, in Blackboard.